Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome to Freshly Grounded episode 168 of Freshly Grounded. Uh, this episode is with a uh, brother called Akhi Omar. Um, that's how I know of him and that's how he is on Instagram. And uh, I've followed him for a while, he's a personal trainer. And uh, this episode I'm going to kind of just ask him about a few um personal training diet isolation workout kind of questions so if you're interested in that kind of thing uh, i'm sure you'll enjoy this episode inshallah uh, and before we get into it guys as you know we are currently running a coronavirus campaign where we are working with human appeal uh, to distribute uh, food or emergency food parcels to the vulnerable in the uk uh, and that costs just 15 pounds so if you have 15 pounds uh, please do donate it donate it at justgiving.com forward slash freshly grounded covid19 uh, and there's also a 70 pound hygiene pack which you can donate um, to people in countries where um they're in need of hygiene packs, they're in need of advice, they're in need of um, help uh, that they don't have like we have over here in places like Pakistan, places like Palestine, places like Yemen. No, Pakistan, Yemen, Iraq, Syria, Palestine. I believe that's the five countries. Um, I keep getting one of them wrong, uh, but um, you can get all the information at justgiving.com forward slash freshly grounded COVID-19. Uh, please do donate if you can and let's get this podcast on the on the roll, on the go. Let's get going. Yeah. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I welcome. I said welcome to Freshly Grounded. The, no, after that bit. The brand new podcast. And after that bit. But best friends, face with Sam. Really? Right, so here, I'll start with this. Um, I've been following you for a while on Instagram. And I remember, I don't know if you do it as much anymore. Maybe you've changed your diet. But I remember that you used to, at least, um, very regularly, maybe like once a day, eat like a whole big cookie with an uh, entire like big spoon of Ben and & Jerry's or haagen -Dazs, And... And um, you would like weigh it, but I don't understand why you would weigh it because it's like the dream cheat meal for anyone. And you're not even using like a protein cookie or like a protein ice cream. You're just going full on with the big fat cookie, big fat ice cream. And I, if I'm not mistaken, you're maybe even cutting those times. So how are you able to do that and still look like how you look with staying trim um, and being in like extremely good shape? Allahumma barik. What, what is the story behind that? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> No, um, basically, bro, and that that was about three years ago now, alhamdulillah. And I'm, really, I'm surprised you even remember. Yeah, it was about three years ago, alhamdulillah. Okay. But, um, what it is, bro, is just basically it's energy balance, right? So calories in versus calories out is the main thing. So if you speak to anyone, they'll always talk about calorie deficit, calorie surplus. So as long as I was in a calorie deficit, and my out output of energy was higher than the input of energy, I was able to lose fat and retain as much muscle tissue through my training and um yeah obviously lose the fat and every day i would have a certain amount of calories and macronutrients so carbohydrates proteins and fats and i used to just fit them in and um i used to always make sure that my last meal before bed and this was before bed people are like how do you eat this before bed like carbohydrates they're not good for you and especially those carbohydrates but i was humble i was able to eat my ice cream and my cookie every single night i used to make it put it in the microwave the cook the microwave the cookie up um slice a bit of the ice cream and that way i was able to enjoy something every single day and still stay on track with my nutrition and training humble but uh, so if because that must be a lot of calories in that one meal right so are you are you saying that you like almost starved yourself during the day so that you could reward yourself in the evening with that like how little what was the calorie you got what was the goal were you cutting at the time yeah i was cutting fine so you're, you're cutting at the time so, so what was your goal calories that you were trying to intake um I'm pretty. I'm. I'm pretty small, so I'm. My build's very small, so I'm short. I'm about. You've seen how tall I am. About five six, and um, I'm not very heavy. I'm about seventy three kilo tops. So, 
my goal was a very uh, my calorie goal was very small so it was about 2100 probably around there which it was still allowed to i could have dropped it a lot more still but it was probably a higher day still so that's why i was able to get the cookie and the ice cream but as times changed and things got smaller and smaller and started dropping the calories a bit further um like the cookie would either come out or the ice cream would cut down to really less or things like that but throughout the day uh pretty much the food and nutrition was uh, pretty good so it was all like uh foods were all uh, high um high energy foods not high energy foods sorry low calorie foods but foods in high nutrients that's the word i was trying to look for fine so let's break that down so 2100 calories is what you're trying to intake at, uh, in the day <laughs> and yeah. um, let's say how many calories was in that cookie and ice cream I think around I can't remember but if we look back at my fitness pal, I used to track everything on my fitness pal um, and I know some people say it's not very accurate but um, alhamdulillah I was still losing weight on the scale uh, my clothes were feeling better I was still well, maintaining as much anything, strength exactly no it helps it's like keeping something throughout the whole process of the journey just say it was 12 weeks of my journey but keeping everything the same so keeping every variable the same so my steps would be the same my calories would change but the tracking would be the same so whether i'm cooking and whether i'm tracking my food cooked or uncooked everything stays the same so pretty much you're not gonna like um go off track or do things very wrong fine so let's go back to this cookie and ice cream situation what uh, how many calories around about i don't need the exact number but i'm trying to break down the maths here so i can understand because someone like myself cutting is extremely difficult so when you see someone who uh like i mentioned has a body like yourself but then is able to eat that but and i know that you're very um specific in how much you intake and how much you um take out and we're going to go into the workouts in a second but for the people listening, because the reason I'm so excited to talk to you is because um, I know you put a lot of focus on calorie surplus versus calorie deficit and uh, eating the right things as well as working out. And that's key right now for a lo- loads of us who are in isolation, me especially, because mm. I want to somehow be able to lose fat at the same time as really thinking, wow, I'm probably in a calorie surplus every single day, no matter how much I, um, how much I work out or how little I work out, because at the end of the day, I'm not getting walks in. I'm not doing this. So one half an hour workout at home compared to the fact that, like, and that's all the exercise I'm getting must really um, be affecting me and still keeping me in a surplus. So like I said, we'll go over onto that for a second. But let's, but to understand this situation of um, the, the cookie and ice cream, can cookie. you can you estimate around how much you was having? I'd say the cookie was probably over 300 itself. And yeah. the ice cream wasn't actually that much, bro, because I was getting... If the tub's um, over 200, just say 300 grams, I'd be consuming about 50 to 100 grams of it. So it was not that much. So calories-wise, I'm guessing over just between 100 and 200 calories. Not that as bad as it seems. So, should so we I say don't feel like it's so that say, much. Should we say 400 calories all in? All in. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so, you need, yeah. So, so you need to have 2,100 calories in a day. And then it will take out four hundred for um, for that. So that takes it to seventeen thousand cal- one thousand seven hundred calories. You now can have in your day. Yeah. How m- so? With that one thousand seven hundred, how many meals do you have in? Uh, probably another three meals with that. So that's breakfast, lunch, so dinner. So one in the morning. Sorry. So that's breakfast, lunch, dinner, and what breakfast, what lunch, dinner. what are you having in those meals to keep? So on average, you're you're trying to seventeen hundred divided by three. My maths would be bad, but that's like five hundred and thirty or something. So how are you keeping those meals around five hundred calories each? So um, I'd always prioritize in each meal protein first, because protein you need protein in each meal. So at least three servings of protein per day, and just say about thirty grams of protein per meal. Then I'd put my carbs and then my fats. Because fats are the highest calorie. So I'd keep my fats low, probably using oil, the oil that I used. So coconut oil, olive oil would be the main sources of fat. If not, like in, in the morning, I'd have my eggs. So that'd be the higher part of the calories from the eggs would be the yolk. You're, so you're frying the, the eggs in coconut oil? Coconut oil okay. or olive oil. Um, but then I got them. So I've changed so many things since then. Like now I'd use spray or I'd use coconut oil because apparently coconut oil is more healthier than using olive oil when you're frying it. So okay. all these things that like, you just keep humbly, like you keep learning as you go on. And I've made so many mistakes through it. I didn't even like finish my cut off properly. Nah, because but I went do you know what, Omar, what I like about you though, bro, 
is and I'm sorry for the listeners who are gonna um, maybe uh, notice that we're having a, a back and forth where I'm butting Omar and Omar's butting me in, but it's because I'm so <laughs> genuinely intrigued um, by this and I want to be able to just really extract out of these conversations um, what I think will will really benefit all of us uh, from your experiences. What I like about you, you can say that you made a lot of mistakes and stuff, is that you have actually gone through the experience and you've gone through the experience and then you yeah. the result is where you're at now which is alhamdulillah you seem to have maintained a good shape the whole time so um let's so let's go back to that then the the the, the meals you're cooking in olive oil, uh coconut oil and and what are the meals looking like for them to be around 500 calories eggs in the morning so Eggs in the morning, um, I would have bread, normal bread, toast, sometimes white, sometimes whole, uh, 50-50. I don't really eat bread at all anymore, but this was back then. Um, vegetables, I wouldn't even count calories for because vegetables are low in calories. So my next two meals would have more vegetables in them. Um, also, my main two meals, I'll probably have two meals of the same things. So it'd be chicken and rice twice. And um, I don't mind yeah and i don't mind having the same foods and i would add a bit of sauce in to just flavor it up and make it taste nice and then just add a bit of vegetables on the side and i've completely changed that right now if you ask me what i've had this morning you'd be like how did you have that for breakfast bro so if i tell you what i had this morning it was uh, i went for my walk you probably you might have seen it and then after that uh, i went I came in and i straight away ate potatoes sweet potatoes in the morning about 300 grams 100 grams of cooked chicken and um a bowl of vegetables and humbly like when i eat foods like that now compared to just eating cereal just say a normal cereal not oats cereal then i feel so different like, i feel sluggish i knew i was coming on here and i, I needed to have the energy so humbly like by having foods that like make me feel better about myself firstly and make my insides feel good it kind of portrays that when i speak to people as well humbly like. so that's why like I really take into consider- consideration the kind of foods that putting into our mouth have to be high in nutrients, not just it's not always just calories. That's what I've learned now. So Fine. Whereas before it was like, okay, calorie, calorie. But just base just talking about calories right now, because I know that's also a big part of it. Um Yeah. Because they because you have to get your nutrients in, but then if you strip that even down, the base of it is that if you want to lose fat you have to be in a deficit is I'm, I, I have no knowledge or scientific knowledge of this and i'm sure there's like differences of opinion but like basing it on the simple mass of calorie deficit versus calorie surplus um if it, 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 how many calories are you currently are you how are you still trying to be in a deficit right now no okay fine so on, on the days where you were trying to be in a deficit where you were eating 20 yeah. 2100 calories that means that you would have yeah. to burn am i right in saying that that means you have to burn more than 2100 calories yeah. So how are you burning more than two thousand one hundred? Sorry, no. A day? Um, basically, bro. It, okay, so it, so the your calories are made up of four components. Okay. So there's BMR, so your basal mo- met- metabolic rate, and I wasn't sure if I had to kind of explain this because I was like, do I remember everything? Because there's four stages. Then there's thermic effect of food. So how how your food kind of processes in your body? It takes energy calories to kind of burn that. Then you've got your um, thermic effect of training, so training in the gym. Then, I don't know if you've heard of NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That's the fourth component, and that's where everyone kind of gets these steps in or helping around the house or doing any movement in the house. That's the biggest, like, if we look at this water bottle, yeah, that's going to be your, uh, your basal metabolic rate. Then you've got, if it comes up, to, the water comes up to about here, It'd be your thermic def- uh, effect of food. Then come here, thermic effect of training or exercise activity thermogenesis. And then the rest, which is a big jump that much here, is your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Now, a lot of people do not take this into consideration, but that's one of the biggest components when it comes to fat loss. So just like a lot of people, like they don't even drop their food so much because they're keeping their non-exercise activity thermogenesis is so high that they don't have to drop the calories as low so you can go two ways about it you can drop the calories further to get into a deficit or you can increase output and more than just trying to increase it in the gym because it's not always easy you can increase outwards um that's why i try to tell people like go for your walks if you're gonna go um on the bus take a further but take go to the next bus stop or come off a bus bus stop earlier walk into the masjid stuff like this like we're so lucky bro like i tell my clients 
who are, alhamdulillah, I work with a lot of Muslims. And I always tell them, like, if you can go to the masjid at least twice a day, walk to the masjid twice a day. Even if you can go to one salah walking, bro, you're firstly, you're going to get so much reward. Secondly, like you're just you're exercising, and third, you're going to like you go if you pass away in that time, bro, you're going inshallah to a good place. So there's always a win win. Like humbly, that's why I love walking, and I try my best when I can to walk to the masjid. I've got a local masjid here that I try to walk to, and and getting there and back is about a thousand steps each way. So humbly, you can just pick up steps uh, easily, but that's what I try to kind of implement for myself and for my clients as well. So how so um. So when you're trying to be in a deficit, if you take into consideration your non-exercise calories, um, yeah. how powerful are your workouts? Like, are you were you working out once a day? Were you working out for an hour a day? Uh, I'm talking about if you're yeah, trying yeah. to be on a cut. In a minute, we'll go on to like how, what people could do in isolation because uh, the, I think the biggest <laughs> difference from what you're talking about to isolation is that that non-exercise yeah. um, calorie Exercise. situation goes all the way down in isolation, right? And so, kind of, how can people still be in deficit in that? But, but, um, but, but at that point, what were your workouts looking like? Uh, are you talking about this three years when, when I was you're in, in a deficit? Well, not necessarily. It doesn't have to be about that specific point, but okay. just generally in when you when you are in deficit as okay, as so Omar. If I if I think about okay, no worries. Uh, if we think about it right now, um, then my training when I go to the gym, I always say this as well: train to maintain, and eat to lose. So training to maintain by right? going into the gym, training hard. And um, pushing your pushing yourself through the workout, making sure you're maintaining that muscle. You want to keep as much muscle as we can whilst we drop fat. And the only way there's two ways to keep the muscle: one by training it, and two by getting sufficient protein into our system to uh, replenish the muscles. And um, sorry, what uh, what was the question again? The question was when you're when you're training to be in a deficit. What do your workouts look like? Yeah, so uh, yeah, so basically it's mostly going to be weight training and a touch of cardio and the cardio is more of a tool where if we're if we're getting too low the food's getting too low and I can't drop the food any further now. So just say it was about 1800 calories a day and I'm getting really tired from it. I need to like either increase my uh, non-exercise activity or exercise activity by doing extra cardio. So maybe on rest days mm-hmm. adding in some cardio. You really make um Weight loss sound and feel easy, but I don't mean that in a negative way. I easy mean that in a positive way. Like you make yeah, it yeah. feel doable, and I think that anyone who is struggling with weight loss right now, if they were to have a conversation with you, perhaps they would get that mo- myself included, get that motivation sure. from you because 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 sometimes you do think it's a mountain to climb, and then when when speaking to you now, realizing that it's only very little changes that you have to make in your life, and you can really be on top of it. So, um, yeah. Okay, I want to talk about. A two uh yeah. two things one is um while i have your attention um a personal um plan and then the second one is uh, generally for people in isolation for all of us in isolation um what we can do so yeah. i'll be selfish and talk about myself first and that's for a person my height my weight um who's generally quite active generally quite active i i don't track anything at this point so i don't know how much calories i'm losing i don't know how many calories i'm taking in i'll be honest and i think that's probably you'd advise the first step is to start tracking but um if i were to start tracking person five foot five foot eight um around 85 kilos right now where i want to be about 75 um so i've got a long way to go um what's the calorie intake meant to look like for me um see everyone's body is different so i wouldn't be able to i can't just give a general Fine. um number but just say it was 2500 phases yeah and that's your deficit now a lot of people no sorry that's your maintenance so to be in a deficit you might want to drop off 200 the mistake a lot of people try to make here is they drop too fast too quickly I see. thinking that it's going to benefit them but like and then they do so much output exercise, like high intensity training and lots of weight training that they can't manage it after two weeks. They're like, mm. it's too much for my body. But they don't realize they need to slowly, gradually get into it. Again, it's it's like just finding the balance and slowly bringing it in instead of rushing to into it and then falling off it completely because you just can't maintain that. So slowly, slowly dropping food, slowly. So you don't even have to count your calories straight away. 
You can start off by managing your portions. You can start off by intermittent fasting. And these kind of things are really big tools, especially with Ramadan coming. Um, cutting out some food in the morning, having breakfast, not breakfast, but having your meal, first meal of the day later on in the day. That way you've cut out just say three, four hundred calories first thing in the morning. If you can maintain a coffee and lots of water throughout the morning until about 12 and then from 12 onwards, eat your meals until about eight, have two, three meals then. That way you'll be cutting out calories in the morning. And in the morning, I think everyone can cut food out. Whereas in the evening and or in the afternoon, you don't really want to cut out food. I don't know. Some people might be different, but I I would prefer I like to nice cut out breakfast. foods in the morning. <laughs> Is it actually? I've heard I've heard you speak about the breakfast. I like yeah. a nice. Uh, what do I you like for breakfast? I like a hearty breakfast. What most people like for dinner, I like for breakfast. This morning, what I had for breakfast. So, is my mother-in-law marinated yeah. some ch- <laughs> my mother-in-law mar- mar- marinated some chicken and managed to get it dropped off yeah. to me um not this morning but managed to get it dropped off to me yesterday and so um i had that chicken man some nice yeah. marinated chicken and made it into a wrap had a chicken wrap with some cheese it must have been nice <laughs> it's very nice now, you see th- this is the thing um Again, when dropping, you can still add these things in. But like when, if you did it today, Faisal, yeah, you're not going to account for anything you've done. You've not checked how the chicken was made. You've not, um, if you've added sauces in, you've not measured anything. You've just chucked a load of cheese. You've put a wrap in. Whereas if you were to track it all and then you'd see a difference in the portion sizes of everything. And <laughs> that's what kind of, I know it sounds It seems uh, impossible because, 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 especially with Asians, right? If I'm eating, um, perfect example, what I just said, my mother knows marinated some chicken. She sent it over. Oh, you guys would love this. Chuck it in the grill. How do I know? I can't, it's not practical for me to ask, all right, how much of this ingredient went in? How much of this ingredient? All right, cool. So that means that that chicken, no, no. because, you know what I mean? So how do you, I don't know how many yeah. calories that's going to be in that chicken. Yeah, it's just, to be honest, I wouldn't even measure all of the spices and stuff like that. It would just be the oil. I would just measure the oil. So how much oil am I going to use? What am I put, what, uh, how much oil is, if there's any oil in the marinade already, then you don't need to add any oil. But really, I don't know how you cook it, but you just need a tiny, you don't need so much oil as much as we put, and especially with our Asian mm. cultural food. Mm. It's just like full of oil, full of carbohydrates, full of fats, and there's no protein. So there's no protein. The low protein means no satiety in our food. So we're not going to get filled with it. There's no vegetables to keep us feeling full. So all we're eating is high fats, high carbs. It tastes really nice. So we're just able to keep consuming it. And we don't think it's my second plate, my third plate. And we'll just continue consuming, consuming until we feel satisfied because it tastes so nice. And that's where like there's an issue with culture and um, food and overweight and obesity. Okay, let's move the conversation slightly over to um, isolation and, and quarantine, right? Yeah. Um. Like I mentioned just now, that 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 type of uh, calorie loss, um, the yeah. one where with non-exercise related uh, activity, is going to have really really shrunk right now. So, um, how can a person keep fit? Um, and 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 for people who are trying to lose weight, how can a person lose weight during isolation? Uh, excuse me. And um, and uh, yeah, that that that's that's my question. So how can they stay fit and healthy and how can they lose weight during quarantine? Exactly, yeah. Is the question, sorry. Yeah. Um, first of all, bro, um, I think my camera's going to die. No worries. Just if, if, oh, as in the battery? Yeah. Okay, just... So just um, quickly change it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, change it. No, no stress. Okay. Yeah, how, how can people stay fit in isolation? That's, that's, that's the question. How can they stay fit in isolation? Okay, so what I kind of do is look for things that I've not done around the house and this could be cleaning gardening stuff like this bro washing your car is so easy it's still exercise or even washing like helping the missus helping your mom wash dishes and this is what we can implement into ramadan because we can help our family at home so um i really look into these kind of things and i'm just whenever i'm doing something i'll try and i'll try and like if i'm going somewhere just say to get something from the house and it's on the other side of the house and it's like I need to get a few items I'll get one item I know it sounds weird I'll get one item I'll go and put it I'll go, I'll go back and get another item I'll go up the stairs 
climb, get another item, and stuff like that. That's just moving. It's mm. keeping me moving, keeping me feeling active. It's making me feel good. And that's why, like, even gardening and stuff like that, I really enjoy doing it because it's keeping me active and it's keeping my mind occupied. Rather than because right now, well, I've not got work. So, like, training is a big thing for me. That's why, like, I train about twice a day if I can. I go for my walks. And that's what I do to keep myself fit and healthy as much as I can during this time because it's difficult being in a house all the time and there's stuff around you and for me specifically bro I've got a shop so I live uh on top of a shop so like I've got food oh, at man. my in front of my face bro so I can get a chocolate if I want to I can get crisp if I want to I can get fizzy drink if I want to but I know these things don't make me feel good these things are not going to benefit my body not just from uh, lo- how it looks but how it feels and then that again cons- uh, kind of has an effect on worship and i can't worship bro like genuine generally like i can't genuinely i don't feel good when i eat certain foods and um it affects me when i'm praying like, I feel you know lazy what that reminds me of there's a um saying by one of the one of the scholars or one of the I don't know if it was a companion. Um, I'll try and find it somewhere. Uh, or if anyone yeah. in the comment section finds it, let us know. But one of the... Um, I think one of like the classical scholars mentioned, he said something like, I noticed that the times I would sin the most will be when my belly is full. Basically to say Whoa. that when you're fulfilling your desire of your stomach... It's then easy to fulfill. You start getting in this cycle of, oh, I fulfilled one desire. Let me fulfill another desire. Let me fulfill. And you become weak to your desires. Whereas if you can, if you can be strict in your desire for food, you can be strict in your desire for, for, for other desires. Yeah, powerful, powerful, no. man. Um, no. Working 100%. out wise, I've seen you working out in your garden and stuff. I, I, I'm so, I, I really, really am like desperate for a barbell, man, because I've got this area outside my house <laughs> where I just feel like if I had a barbell, I could just do so much and, I was looking because if you, these places like um, Argos and, and, and Decathlon and all these sites online, they all obviously sell barbells and they're only selling them for like 30, 40 quid, but everywhere it's absolutely sold out. And then people are selling them on eBay. 30, for like, quid. Yeah, but, yeah. Could, but you're, not, you're not looking at like Olympic bars, oh, like oh, okay. basic barbell, right? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But on eBay, people are selling them, them for like 200 quid because they know the demand. Anyway, yeah. I, I found out that one of my brother's friends has a barbell and uh so i could have taken his barbell and i was really excited but he doesn't have any plates and I, I so i'm still i'm gonna be out of weight so i'm trying my best to not use that as an excuse i'm trying to make my workouts as efficient as possible but i feel like if i had the barbell and i have the aerial already i could do deadlifts i could be doing bicep curls tricep um uh skull crushes squats shoulder press everything and i can still do that kind of stuff now with what i have around me but I, yeah. I I think I am making an excuse. But how, how are your workouts going, man? Your home workouts? I was, I've been seeing them I'm on like, your story. I got I got really lucky, bro. So the gym that I work at, where I do my personal training, they were selling equipment, and I was like, I seen it on their Instagram. I messaged him like, I want I want that barbell if you're selling it, or if you've got anything, let me know. And he's like, Look, I've got five hundred customers. I'm gonna put them first, so they get the option of buying whatever they want. So the day after, he's put it, posted it again and he's messaging me straight away like, bro, do you want to buy the barbell? Before he's even asked anyone. And I was like, I'll take it. So humbly, it was like, it was written for me. And mm. I went and quickly got it. And uh, humbly, I'd use it daily. And it's, I love the, the barbell. Like, it feels like I'm in the gym. So it's like, it's not the same. But at least I've got the barbell to do yeah, whatever I need course. to do kind of thing. And then I got plates from another gym and they gave it me for free to borrow until everything's over. So like, alhamdulillah, I can't even complain. Oh man! Do you know what I was thinking? That. I was thinking that that the, all these gyms are gonna have this stuff empty, and if someone trusted me enough to just lend me like plates and a barbell, be ideal. Yeah. But I was thinking to myself that the only person who I know would probably do that for me is Zaf because he has a gym right in Birmingham. Oh, but I was thinking he's in Birmingham. I can't go to Birmingham right now. Station. So um, yeah, that would be ideal because uh, my missus is like onto me that like you can't keep a barbell in the house. So I wouldn't be able to keep it anyway until uh, only uh, after isolation really. Uh, we got a small little uh, flat. Um, uh, let's talk a bit about your fitness journey though as well. Uh, uh, after you've discussed your workout, man, because uh, I want to know how you got into fitness and... Um, and, and and your journey a bit. I know I know that I mentioned to you off air that because of isolation, I want to try and keep these episodes short because we're trying to do as many as possible. 
uh, and therefore I kind of jumped straight in with like the key information like how do you stay in deficit and all this kind of stuff but I am intrigued by your story because I don't know it um, h- how did you get into fitness I think it for me it started when I was uh, in secondary school um, basically I was chubby as a kid and then as soon as I started secondary as like primary school as soon as I got into secondary school I kind of dropped a lot of weight so I was like paranoid thinking I'm going to get fat again um, so like I had um, I, would, I wouldn't eat properly and I wanted to move and exercise a bit but I was always scared that I'm going to get fat again so um, anyway I think it kind of died out slightly when, as I got a bit older to about 14 and then I wanted to buy a pull-up bar then I got a pull-up bar and I started like using my little dumbbells at home and I just used to do bicep that's it nothing else just bicep work and I seen a change in my arms I was like oh there's a bicep see and then um, I'm like through that I um, went towards college and in college I did a fitness instructing course and that kind of pushed me and I was in the co- in college during lunch times I would just go to the gym and work out that's all I did I never used to like chilling with people talking to people and stuff I used to just go to the gym eat my tuna sandwiches and train and then I'd come back and I was about three four days a week we used to get an hour workout I used to try and get my workout in and then yeah as, as I developed and got older I just kept that closeness to the gym and that for me was like my going out so if I was able to go to the gym in a, in a day, that was like going out for me. So alhamdulillah, I used to really enjoy going to the gym, taking my time, using the weights and just learning as I go. And alhamdulillah, to this day, we're still always learning. And there's like so many things out there, bro, that you just keep learning about training. You keep learning about your nutrition. You're never like, you're not, not that you're not satisfied. You're never going to know enough. And there's like a saying that the more you know, the more you realize you don't know and it's so true like you don't even know anything and it's like am i really this behind but alhamdulillah we're always learning and the journey continues but um yeah that's my kind of how i started so it was in i've still got the pull-up bar on the same door but i'm a bit big now to (laughs) get under i'm a bit taller now to get underneath it but alhamdulillah is still there when you say you're working out two times a day right now during quarantine what are those workouts so you got the barbell, so, so you're obviously doing like some weight workouts. So some weight workout in the evening, but in the morning I'd um, do like my skipping press-ups, pull-ups, if I do. But now I've kind of changed that. So I realise that sometimes too much of anything is not good for us. And moderation is so important. And I was neglecting stretching. And a lot of people might want to, inshallah, will benefit from this and they'll really learn to stretch because we're going to be sitting down all the time, isolation, we're not going to be moving, we're going to be watching maybe TV. And if they're not moving or they're working from the desk, they're going to get really tight, their muscles are going to get tight, their posture is going to become round and it's not going to be healthy for them. So for inshallah, for them to get off their sofa for a bit and just move and stretch, that'll be key and making sure they're staying hydrated. Because hydration is another thing. A lot of people might not might not be fully hydrating themselves through this time because they think, oh, they don't need to stay hydrated because they're in the house. But that's that can lead to over consuming calories and overeating because your your body is thinking it's not getting nutrients and water will you just you might just need to stay hydrated and that that hunger and stuff will just go out the window. Yeah, I've noticed that. Um, I've been. I've noticed that I've been having a lot less water. I'm normally so conscious of my hydration. And I noticed, I thought to myself, hold on a second, I, I haven't drunk half as much as water as I normally drink. And so now I'm trying to consciously force it. I think it's just because, um, yeah, you're right. I think it's because you, I suppose subconsciously you, you forget that you need it because you're not doing much. Um, even with, yeah. the, with the stretching thing that you mentioned, I think it's so apt because I, I, I believe it was John Cena who is abs- absolutely obsessed with working out, obviously, um, yeah, yeah. who mentioned that when he works out, which is most probably every day, he, um, he stretches for two hours uh, for uh, before workout. Wow. Can you believe that? Two hours okay. is his stretching. Oh, I thought two minutes. I thought, sorry, 20 minutes was enough. Oh, I'll get bored after it. But um, uh, he's he's incredible, bro. He's, he's some of And he says that as he gets older, he realises how important stretching is. And I... And, no, 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 no. Do you know what, bro? I'm getting it wrong. He does stretch for an extremely long time, maybe half an hour or something. But I think it's okay. David Goggins who stretches for two hours. I'm not, I'm not sure who that is. He's an uh, like ex-military guy in America who's like now like this like uh, proponent of like just keeping really fit and healthy through like running and cardio and stuff. And he said that... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I do know him. Yeah, he said 
that uh, stretching bold had, guy. Yes. He said that stretching just completely changed his life. Yeah, yeah. Completely changed his life, bro. Um, I think he might even hold the world record for like the most pull-ups or something. Yeah, but yeah. Um, even with regards to weight, weirdly, with regards to like weight loss and stuff, stretching's helped him, which I don't know the link between. But it's really, I'd really recommend um, listening to one of his uh, interviews with Joe Rogan because he's done a few with him. But on one of them, he speaks about his stretching and it was very inspiring. You'd finish listening to that episode and you think, well, I'm going to really try and focus on stretching now. No, I definitely have a hundred percent for me. I could really feel lower back tightness and tension, and as soon as I started stretching, humble the release just makes me feel better. I feel good. I feel mobile again. Otherwise, I think I was doing too much exercise, and my body was just getting tighter and tighter. Sometimes your body needs an MOT just through stretching, mm. and humble it feels really good. But also, yeah, hydration. Making sure you're staying hydrated and sleep. I don't know how your sleep is, but you seem like an early riser. So making sure we get like the afternoon nap, which is sunnah as well. And it will make you feel refreshed for the rest of the evening, inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, Omar, I, I really appreciate you giving us your time today and uh, for um, giving us a fast track to that knowledge because you've had to seek the knowledge that you've got by years of experience, messing around with your body, uh, trying to understand like what should be going in, what shouldn't be going in. And, and for you to be able to kind of package that and just hand that to us is, is very, very helpful and, and something that we uh, don't take for granted. So really appreciate that. Inshallah, one day we can do an a- actual episode of Freshly Gone together. You very um, uh, appropriately mentioned that this was the week that we were going to, inshallah, have, we would have met anyway because we were, um, this was going to be the week of the Freshly Grounded event. Um, which is obviously not happening now. And uh, so I appreciate you giving us your time and, and inshallah we could do an episode in person sometime soon. Inshallah. Well, I forgot to say thank you, but Jazakallah for your time as well, bro. I appreciate you having me on. No, <laughs> but, no problem. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure, man.